morning. Can everyone hear me? Sorta. Of. Can you hear me good? Yeah. Just want to make sure. Um, hi. My name is Jasmine Rosario. I'm one of the um, admission counselors at UMass Amherst, one of the people that's going to be reading the applications. Um, and I know a little bit about the school. I'm here to share some information with you and answer any questions that you might have. Um, before I get started, I wanted to just give a shameless plug for a program that we're putting on called UREP UMass Ready, Set, Apply. It's taking place at the UMass Center at Tower Square in Springfield. You all familiar with downtown Springfield, Tower Square? There's a UMass section in that building, and we're trying to use it more. Um, and so on October 21st and December 11th, or either in the evening or on a Saturday, and I'll share information with your counselor, we're doing um, workshops. We'll walk you through how to fill out the common application. We'll give you tips on what kind of essays we're looking for. We'll help you... Um, Keep track of all the different schools that you're applying to. Hopefully UMass is on your list, but we know you're applying to a whole bunch. Just so that you know what each school is looking for, you stay organized, and then there's a financial aid session. So those are all pieces that might be interesting to you. Um, so you may have already gotten an email from UMass Amherst. Um, if you've ever met with us or if you know, you've ever taken a pre-SAT or something like that, you might be in a database. If not, I'm going to send the flyer to your school, your counselors, so that they can share with you and you can register. Okay? It's free, and it's after school or on the weekend. All right. That's a nice bell. Soothing. All right. So how many of you have been to UMass Amherst? Okay. All right. You know people there. Do you attend a, a game or an event? That's usually how it is. Usually if you're not coming to, like, the school, there's not a real lot of reason to be in the town of Amherst anyway, right? Um, so we, you know, you've been there, you've seen where we're located, kind of suburban, rural, middle of nowhere, cows, and lots of open fields. Um, but then when you pull up to UMass Amherst campus, it turns into like a mini city. So there's a lot of things to do in that area. There's also four other colleges in our backyard that make what we call the five college consortium. And as a UMass Amherst student, you can take two classes per semester for free at any of those other four schools and vice versa. So it's a nice extension of our campus. You get to pay our tuition but have access to all five colleges. Um, those are Smith College, Mount Holyoke College. So Smith's in Northampton, Mount Holyoke's in South Hadley, and then Amherst College and Hampshire College, which are both in Amherst. Um, so it's a nice benefit to be able to explore all the other schools in the area and not have to pay for their classes. Um, so that's a little bit about like our location, um, especially for the campus setting. Are most of you seniors? Any juniors? Some of you? Okay, any sophomores? All right, so juniors and seniors. So um, I'm going to give some information to the seniors first because this is what you need like right now. And juniors, you can kind of take note and I might be back next year. Or you can just kind of remember what you'll need for next year. But we're getting ready to start, you know, collecting your applications. So um, we're on the Common App. That's where you find us, a really easy location. Um, and the things that we need for your application to be complete are your high school transcript, um, an essay. We want to know what your activities are, and letters of recommendation. So we do not require SATs anymore. Uh, no ACTs or SAT. We're completely test optional. It's a three-year thing. So we started last year. We're going to do it this year and next year. So Junior, seniors, you're good. For the sophomores, they should check back with us to see if that's what we're still doing. Hopefully, we never bring it back, but we'll see what the, uh, you know, what the data shows us. Um, so we're not requiring that, but we are still obviously looking at your grades and the rest of the components of your application. So um, even though your grades matter, of course, we do a holistic review. So we look at everything that you submit in order to make our decision. We really do read your essays and details. That's one of my favorite things to do. Because, yes, you might get, you know, grades in a course, but who are you, right? Like, your grades don't tell me anything about you as an individual. And so that's where that extra stuff that you write is really helpful for us, okay? So on the Common App, we give you all the prompts. You can write about anything you want to write about. Um, just make sure that it's well written. Have a couple eyes, read it over, share it with your teachers, your counselors, anybody at home just to proofread. Make sure that there's no too many errors and things like that. That's what we're looking for, strong writing, not like 
wow, this is a boring essay or this is super impressive as far as the topic is concerned. Um, but we want to get to know you. I can't tell anything about you based on the fact that you got like a B in biology um, unless you want to be a biology major. What else is it that you want to share with us? So there's the Common App, there's the UMass section of the Common App, okay? We ask you two short questions. Why do you want to go to UMass Amherst? And why do you want to major in what you want to major in? These questions are important. Sometimes, you know, it's 100 words, it's a short answer, but we're the flagship state school in the state of Massachusetts, and we're on the Common App, so everyone's kind of just like checking us off. And I need to know, are you just submitting an app because we're there, or are we really on your list and you're interested in us? So we say, why you math? Tell us a couple of reasons why you're applying to our school. It doesn't have to be very long. There might be a major that you're really interested in. There might be a club or organization that you want to participate in. You might just say, like, I heard you have the number one campus dining and I want to eat your food for four years, right? But at least take the time to give us that answer. The second one is why these majors. That's super important, especially if you're thinking about applying into engineering, business, computer science, or nursing. Any of you interested in any of those four areas? Engineering, business, computer science, nursing. Okay. So those areas, those majors, those um, you know, programs are considered competitive. So they're a little bit more uh, challenging to get into directly out of high school. So because of that, when we're looking at your application, we're going to see why are you selecting engineering or why are you selecting computer science or nursing. We also give you the option of, of selecting a second choice major or like an alternative major. So if you're interested in engineering and then you put down, I don't know, dance as your second choice, I'm going to be like, why these majors? Why did this student choose two things that were so different? Um, and so we read our applications by major. That's something that's very specific to our school. Most colleges who come in here talk to you say, I'm the counselor that reads your high school, right? Like, I'm the one that reads for everyone at Holyoke High. That's not how we do it at UMass Amherst. We read it by major. So I might be reading all the students who apply into engineering, but I'm not gonna read all the students who apply from Holyoke High. So I'm looking at your application in context to the major you told me you wanna study, not in comparison to your peers in your high school. So because of that, if you put engineering as your first choice and dance as your second choice, I'm gonna go, should I take the time to give this application to the dance counselor if this person doesn't get into engineering? Do they really want dance or do they just pick it random because they just wanted to put a second choice major? So that answer on why these majors is really gonna help me determine should I move your application forward or not. So if you leave it blank, I'm gonna go, they don't really want dance. That's not really what they wanted. They didn't tell me anything about that. They really applied to engineering. I'm not even gonna bother passing it on to the dance um, counselor. Does that make sense? So just tell us what you're selecting and why. You can always change your mind. You can always change your major. You can always switch, move around. Lots of students do that. Um, I had a tour guide once who changed her major five times graduated in four years. So it's not, I mean, that's not that common, but it's also not um, surprising to anybody if you say, you know what, I don't really like this, I wanna do something else. There's only maybe a dozen majors that you've been exposed to or subjects that you've been exposed to so far, but you don't know if you like social thought and political economy because you don't know what that is yet, right? So you are welcome to change your mind and move around. The only major that you can't do that with is nursing. Who's here interested in nursing? All right, so here are my disclaimers for nursing, and it's important to kind of keep in mind. Every school is telling you, right, that nursing is the most competitive, right? You know that. Um, for us, a big part of that is because of space, how many students we have um, available for the nursing program. So here's the big picture. The total students at UMass Amherst is about 23,000. So we're a big school, actually medium for the United States, but big for where we are in Northeast. Our freshman class has about 5,000 students, approximately. Out of that 5,000, 64 of them are nurses. So that's the enrollment number for nursing. So students who are applying, if we're getting 6,000 applications and we can only enroll 64 students, it's really the top of those applicant pool. So apply to many nursing schools, that's my first tip. 
Um, also, why these majors? That's going to be important. Tell us why you're interested in majoring in nursing. You could be like, I've been dreaming about being a nurse my whole life. I don't want to do anything else. This is what I want to do. Or you could say, I want to study something in the medical field. I think it might be nursing, but I want to, you know, explore. Maybe I might be interested in being a physician's assistant. Maybe I want to end up doing pre-med. I'm not really sure. I'm applying to nursing, but if I don't get in, I'll study something else. In, in the health sciences field, okay? So there's two different types of students. If you're the student who absolutely wants nursing and you're not willing to consider anything else, tell us, because we're not gonna put you in your second choice. That seems mean, but here's why. Most schools don't take internal or external transfer for nursing. So what that means is if, I didn't tell you this, right? And you came to UMass as a biology second choice, and you're like, I'm going to go as biology, but really I'm going to transfer back to nursing later. You get there, and then someone goes, actually, you can't do that. There's no internal transfer into nursing. Now you're stuck. You can't do nursing at UMass. So then you'll say, well, I got into three other schools. They accepted me to nursing. I picked UMass because that's where I wanted to be. But if you're not going to give me nursing, I'm going to go to those other schools. And those schools are going to say, you already deposited. You've been at UMass for two weeks. You're considered a transfer. We don't take transfers. So now what do you do? You're stuck. You can't do nursing. You got to do four years, finish, and then do another program. So we don't want to do that to you. I don't get any benefit from getting you to come to UMass and like putting you on a track that takes you off of your goals, okay? Um, so if you're that type of student, then if you're not admitted to nursing, we'll just release your application and let you go to where you got admitted. But if you're like, if I don't get into nursing, I'm still interested in UMass. I still want to explore public health, pre-health track, pre-med, physician's assistant, any of those things. Then tell us that so that I can put you into your second choice major, okay? For any other major, those rules don't apply. So this is really specific to nursing. For everybody else, change your mind five times like that tour guide that I mentioned before. You are welcome to move around um, and, ch and, and transfer. We just found out new information that another major that is preventing or, or no longer accepting internal transfers is business. So if you're interested in our Eisenberg School of Management, you definitely want to apply directly into that program so that you can go right in. If you're not admitted into business, the only other option you will have is to minor in business. And this is a brand new thing. Like this is the first year that's been the case because it's so popular. There's so many students in that program. They can't take all the students who come in as a second choice because they're really trying to change their major, okay? So for anything else, you're free to move around. Anyone here interested in business? All right, so Eisenberg is a great program. They want to know that you have taken up to pre-calculus, okay? So if, you haven't, if you're a junior and you still have room to sign up for pre-cal, definitely take it. Um, if not, it's not like a one and done, you're not admitted, but it really does um, help your application if you have at least pre-calculus in your senior year for math. Okay. The same thing applies for engineering and computer science. They want to know that you took up to pre-calculus. Okay. So tell us your majors. Tell us why. Tell us who you are. Your essay can be anything. It doesn't necessarily need to be about your COVID experience because there's a section on you and the common app that says tell us about your COVID experience if there's anything specific you want to share. So if you had any extenuating circumstances, I mean, it's been crazy for everybody, but it's been more significant for some people than others. Um, and so if there's something that you really want to share, like, listen, this impacted my life. This is why my grades look like this this semester. Virtual school was not for me. Whatever you want to share, put that in the COVID section and then tell us something separate about yourself in the essay. All right. You only need one letter of recommendation, but most students send about three. Don't send like five or six. That's like a lot <laughs> of reading. Pick a teacher, a counselor, people who know you pretty well. Um, and then your activities. Your activities are important, not because we want to see that you do a hundred things, but just because we want to know that you're practicing time management. Um, UMass is a big school. There's a lot to do. 23,000 undergrad, as I said, over 400 clubs and organizations. So there's lots of ways to get involved. You're never going to be bored. But in order for you to manage your schedule, go to your academics, and also go to your clubs and maintain your grades, you should already be doing that, kind of practicing that now. So if I see that you do absolutely nothing, like at the end of the day, you just go home, lock your doors, 
play Fortnite. I don't know what kids do these days. You just lock your door and don't do anything. I'm going to say, wow, this student's going to be really overwhelmed at UMass because UMass is really busy and they don't do anything now. So it's not like I want you to impress me with like 15 clubs and you'd have to be the president. It's just so that we get an idea of how you manage your day. Does that make sense? So it could be a club and organization. It could be a sport. It could be a part-time job. It could be responsibilities at home. I'm the oldest sibling of my family, so I couldn't really do a whole lot after school. I had to go home, make sure everybody was good, start dinner, those kinds of things. But I didn't get to my homework till like 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night. So in order for me to still pull really good grades and manage all of that, I had to kind of show that so that they go, oh, all right, when the student comes, they'll still be able to go to class, participate in these clubs that go till 8 o'clock, still do their homework, and they'll do just fine at this college. All right, so don't feel pressured to have to be the president of every club or the captain of a team. But if you are the president of a club or captain of a team, highlight that. That might, that might be something that we would want to recommend you for an honors program at that point um, and give you, you know, scholarship recommendations and things like that. So anything you want, really brag about yourself on the application. Okay? Ooh, loud background. We have two deadlines, early action and regular decision. Early action is November 5th. Regular decision is January 15th. And all of this information is in here so you don't have to like memorize it. Um, if you want nursing or music, definitely early action. Any other major, up to you what you want to do. Um, do you know when your first quarter grades come out? They came out um, in November. November? Yeah. You think it's after November 5th? All right, so think about this. Do you want me to see your senior year grades when I'm making a decision? I wanted my senior year grades to count. We count them as a full year, so we're not going to, you know, divide it by four. We're also going to just assume that's what you're going to graduate with. So if you have an A in your English class and I admit you with that A and it turns into a C later, don't, it can't turn into an F. <laughs> you can't fail it because that means you don't have the credits. But if it drops to a B, right? I'm going to ask for your final transcript to make sure that you graduated, but I'm not going to redo your GPA with a new one. That A is what sticks. So if you want that grade to count in your cumulative um, overall GPA, then you might want to wait till regular decision. It really depends on how soon your transcript comes out. The early action deadline is November 5th, but we don't start releasing decisions until like December. So you might have some time to still do early action and get us your senior year grades. But if I send you a decision, before I get your senior year grades, I can't go back and redo it. Okay? So it's really a timing thing. It's really up to you. But if you're the type of student who's like, no, I've been this consistent. My freshman year, junior year, senior year has all been the same. A's and B's. There's no difference. Then we can make our decision with three years. Okay? Um, so those are the deadlines for the application. Are you guys familiar with the FAFSA? Yeah? Okay. So that opened up Friday, the 1st of October, and the deadline is in March. So you have a wide window to do it. Um, but it's helpful to get as much of that stuff in together all at once. All right? If you, get, if you apply early action, for example, and I accept you in December, but you don't submit your FAFSA until March, December, January, February, you're sitting on an acceptance, you have no idea how much money UMass is going to give you because you haven't done your FAFSA yet. Then you do your FAFSA by March 1, then they have to take the time to process it, and you don't get your package until April. So you got in in December, but it's April before you even know how much money you're getting from UMass Amherst. If you do it at the same time, you get those information really quick, then you're getting all your stuff back. And you can kind of sit with your counselors, your families, your guardians, whoever's helping you make the decision to look at your FAFSA and say, this is the school I want to go to because this is the best package for me. It might be UMass, it might not. All right? So you, want, you don't want to rush. Also, because most schools are going to um, require you to deposit, commit by May 1. So if you get a package in April, now you only have a few weeks to make a decision. And I don't want you to rush. It's a big decision. It's expensive. It's a life-changing, right? You don't want to just be like, oh, I got to pick somewhere. So give yourself enough time to get your packages back so that you have, you know, all of January, all of February, all of March to ask as many questions as you need so that by the time you're like, this is where I'm going, you're confident because you got all the information in advance. Okay? 
So it's just a tip. Um, so FAFSA application, and that's it. We don't ask for any other documents, okay? Um, once you're there, there's a lot to choose from. We have over 100 academic programs, and you can also build your own major. So maybe there's something, I think it's on the second to last page here, is where, yeah, you can see all of our majors, and they're in smaller schools and colleges. So we have like 10 schools and colleges, and that's where all the majors are. How many of you have no idea what you want to study? Oh, all of you know? Impressive. Well, let me just say, statistically, half of you are going to change your mind. So let's pretend you're going to change your mind, right? Um, or you're like, you know what? You get to the common app and you decide you don't know. We don't have undecided or undeclared. You're not going to see that. We have exploratory tracks. Um, so College of Natural Science, for example, you might say, I love science. I think I want to major in biology. We have biology, we have biochemistry and molecular biology, and we have microbiology. You might be like, oh, okay, I don't know which one of those I want to study. I know it's something in that area. So you could do the exploratory track of the College of Natural Science or the exploratory track of humanities and fine arts. That's basically being undecided in that smaller school. So you, don't, you can still be undecided, we just don't call it that. Okay? And then it's putting you in an area rather than saying, explore 100 majors and hope to get out in four years. This really helps you stay on course so that you can graduate in that four-year period and kind of move around. Um, so that's our version of undeclared if you don't know. Otherwise, go right into a major directly. Um, for art and architecture, you have to submit an art portfolio. For music and dance, you have to audition. For theater, you don't have to audition. Any of you interested in like pre-med or pre? We have pre-med, pre-law, pre-vet, and pre-dental. So you want to be a dentist, a doctor, a lawyer, or a vet, you can do any of those at UMass. The only one you're going to see on the application is pre-vet. The reason is because that's, uh, you have to be an animal science major to do pre-vet. you got to know 22 species of animal to be a veterinarian. Where doctor only needs to know one, the human body. <laughs> Not like it's only, because I can't do any of that. But you have to do a lot within the animal science department. But if you do pre-med, pre-dental, or pre-law, you can do any major. So that's why you're not going to see it on the application because it's not a major. You add it. It's like a minor. It's called an advising track. And you add it to your schedule. So you could be a dance major and do pre-med. You could be a Japanese language and literature major and do pre-law. Because you become a lawyer and a doctor in med school, in law school, in dental school. We're just giving you the prerequisites. Um, but there might other, be other things that you're interested in. Like, I really love art. I really love psychology. I really love whatever. Once you start med school, you don't have time to do any of that. And you're going to be like, I wish I had the opportunity to do that. Undergrad's the time to do it. Okay? So, if any of you are interested in that, we have it, but it's not a major. Are there any questions for me so far? Because I feel like I can just talk at you. Yeah. Sports Management is a great program. It's in our Eisenberg School of Management. So as you heard, it's a popular area. Um, a lot of our students, you know, they have internships at places like ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. Um, we have really um, nice, like, equipment where students can practice doing, like, if you're looking to be, um, like, a sports caster or something like that. Um, it's a great program. Um, I don't know all of the different internship opportunities that students have, but I know that like for direct admission, we want to know that you're taking that minimum pre-calculus math course, um, and our overall average GPA for the school is about a 3.8 weighted. That means 25% of our students have less than that, and 25% of our students uh, have more than that, and about 50% right in that middle range, it usually goes from 3.8 to like a 4 over for something. But that's on a 5.0 scale. So we give you weight for your honors classes and your AP classes. Are any of you taking honors courses? Any AP courses? Any dual enrollment in HCC? All right, so those classes get extra weight. So all your honors, your Bs turn to B pluses. All your AP and dual enrollments, your Bs turn to As. Okay, so we give you a boost for those. Um, and then if you're sitting for the AP exam, 
you can get credits for that. You can get credit for your dual enrollment classes because that's a college course. So that might take away some classes that you have to take in college. So it's definitely beneficial to take those. Let us know what those are. Um, so we come up with a weighted GPA. So that average for the school is kind of like minimum for those areas that I was talking about. Eisenberg, engineering, computer science, definitely nursing, okay? Um, it's not a hard and fast minimum. Like, it's not like, oh, you don't have a 3.8, you're not in. Like, there's students who have 3.6 that get in. There's students maybe even lower than that. Application is really strong. Um, but I will say, typically not below a 3.0, okay? Um, any specific majors that any of you want to hear about? Someone asked about sports management. Neuroscience. Neuroscience. So we have a neuropsychology track. Like if you want to study the human brain, like the like the like how people think, um, that's through psychology. We don't have like like a biology or anatomy type of neuroscience, um, but you could do biology, you could do a pre-med if you're looking to like go on and study that further, but I would say probably the closest thing we have to that is the, ne the neuropsych track in our psychology. Yep. What else? Yeah. So there's no special requirements like how there is for like those competitive areas that I was talking about. As long as you're admissible to the school, you can be admitted into pre-vet. Um, so, like, for the school overall, I would say our minimum GPA is a 3.0. Um, so you may have heard from some of my cousin schools, like Westfield, Fitchburg, Salem, Worcester, that do the sliding scale. The sliding scale only comes into play below a 3.0. So it's like 2.99, here's the SAT you need, and they have a, the lower your GPA, higher SAT, and verse, vice versa. We don't require SATs anymore, and because our minimum is around 3.0, we don't use the sliding scale. So it's just your transcript, and then all the written documents that you submit. So as long as you, you know, are admissible to the school, then you're admissible to pre-vet, where that's not necessarily the case for computer science. I saw another hand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question. It's called BDIC, Bachelor's Degree of Individualized Concentration. There are majors that students are doing on our campus where, like, they're the only one studying that, or they're one of a few. Music production, for example. We have music as a major. You could do a composition, you could do education, you could do performance, but like if you want to be the next, I don't know, Kanye, Pharrell, <laughs> we don't have that as a major, but you can make it. So students um, go to our build your own major department, they talk about what they want. Students will, uh, that department will say, okay, to do music production, you need to take some music classes, but you also need to take some business classes. You need to use some of the equipment in our communications department. We have a digital media lab, like, right, and they're pulling from all these different things, creating a course of study, and when they graduate, it's going to be, like, bachelor's degree of individual concentration, music production, right? So that's not on the common app either because we don't know what we're building for you. So you might want to apply to something close to what it is that you're looking to do and then add to it once you get there. Or you can reach out to BDIC now in advance and say, hey, this is something that I'm thinking about. Is that something you think I could build? And if they say yes, then you can just apply to the closest major that they advise you to do, okay? Um, computer animation is another one. We don't have that as a major. We have art, we have graphic design. But Hampshire College has computer animation and we're part of the five college consortium and you can take two of their classes every semester for free. So there's students who are building computer animation. They're a UMass student, but they're taking those classes at Hampshire. So there's a lot of ways to kind of create something new. Um, or if, you're, if you can't like narrow it down, you can't triple major. The most you could do is double major or dual degree. So if you can't narrow down, you're thinking four or five things, BDIC might be another really good option for you. Yeah. What other questions? Can a student transfer from, um, like, if they stay at the same U.S. for two years, do they want to attend another college, like community college or state? Yeah. Can they transfer those credits? Absolutely. So we are a state institution, so we're, at, we're all one big family, right? There's five UMasses, nine state schools, and 15 community colleges, okay? So, um, you know, UMass Amherst, Westfield State, Holyoke Community College. We're all relatives if you will, and you can transfer easily throughout the state system. 
The most popular option is community college to a four-year. We call those two plus two programs or mass transfer, which are specific programs. Um, I love the two plus two option. I think it's a great option. Um, you can save a ton of money by doing it that way. Um, but also, if you're kind of worried about maybe I need more preparation for these level of courses, maybe my grades didn't get me in directly, I still want to graduate from UMass, here's the way to do that. So you can apply to HCC or six, start there, um, and do your core classes. So you got to do English comp, you got to do history, you got to do math, you got to do science, you got to do two years of general ed courses regardless of your major. So take them at HCC, get them out of the way. Once you have those complete, then you can apply to UMass Amherst. At that point, we just look at your HCC transcript. High school disappears. You are now a college graduate with an associate's degree. We don't care what happened in high school, and we're just making a decision based on how you did at HCC. And then you do your two years of a major at UMass, and you graduate that way. So a lot of students will do that. Um, it doesn't have to be a direct mass transfer program, but there are some programs that are like built in so that you could go from a STEM at STIC to a STEM at UMass and maybe, you know, they're guaranteeing that you'll stay within a certain cost. Um, they know that you might be able to do it in less than four years. So there's a lot of options for transferring. So definitely consider that, okay? Um, most of our students, all of our first years are technically required to live on campus with the exception of students who live within a certain radius. So you all fall within that. You're close enough where if you wanted to commute, you can. But if you want to live on campus, you're guaranteed housing for all four years. If you choose to commute, you get rid of the about 14000 a year that you would pay for living on campus. So you can save that. Um, and our cost of attendance, let's see what page that's in. It's one of these documents. It's like if you go back one, two, three pages, you'll see our cost of attendance breakdown. Don't let these numbers scare you because this is before any financial aids applied, before any scholarship awards, um, and so on. So it's about 16000 for in-state tuition and then another fourteen for room and board. So it's approximately thirty a year before anything is applied. No one's paying thirty a year out of their pocket. Um, I would say m almost 90% of our student body gets FAFSA financial aid. So we'll definitely find ways to do that. Um, we have study abroad. Anyone think about traveling one day when we can travel again <laughs> freely throughout the world? Um, definitely look into it. We have over 400 programs to choose from. Um, you can go, you could do a domestic exchange where you could stay within the United States and visit another school in the United States. Like, for example, students ask me, do you have marine biology? And I'm like, no, we have an amazing animal science program. But if you become an animal science major, maybe you want to do like a semester at the University of Miami who has a really great mi a marine biology program. Maybe you don't want to go there full time, but you can kind of supplement your education that way. So you could do in state, um, in the country. I would say our most popular is Hawaii, of course. And then you can do um, international. So maybe you want to go to a different country for a semester, a year, short term, like summer, winter, spring break. Maybe you want to do all your classes a foreign language or all your classes in English. Maybe you want to live on a college campus or live with a host family where you just like, you're like an additional welcome sibling into a family that lives and you just go to school there. So there's a lot of options for that. Um, you know, students tell me all the time, I would love to, but I know it's too expensive. I know I can't afford it. College already is a lot for me to think about. Now you want me to go to China too? Like, that's too much. Look into it, okay? At least the worst you can do is say, I'm not going to go. But get the information. Because I said there's over 400 programs, you might find something that works for you. You can even um, talk to the financial aid department early about setting up your package so that you can use some money to travel. I had a tour guide who, like, right before the pandemic, um, was in Granada, Spain, and her semester in Spain cost less than her semester at UMass. So she actually saved money by traveling. So there might be weight. That's obviously not all of them. Don't think every single program is going to be like that. But there, because there's so many, you might find something in that that works for you. So at least look into it. So we have study away. Um, 400 clubs and organizations. Over clubs and organizations were D1. Any of you thinking about playing a sport? 
We got the UConn UMass football game this weekend. If you want to check it out, come visit. Um, that's a big part of our campus culture. But if you're not into sports, fine. That's not going to be in your face all the time. There's other things that are going on. We have cultural clubs, hobby clubs, religious clubs. We got a lettuce eating club. No. You want to know about that? Lettuce eating club. They meet once a year. The goal is to see who can eat the head of lettuce fastest. Whoever <laughs> wins is the president, and then they get to plan next year's. I mean, if there's, if you can't find something to do within that 400, you can make your own club. That's corny. I like to tell about it because it's like super random. But then there's regular clubs that you might be familiar with, like Black Student Union, Latinos Unidos. Like the cultural clubs are really popular on campus, and they get together and often play in our spring weekend. So that tends to be a lot of fun. So yeah. Jobs. Absolutely. Lots of on-campus jobs, off-campus jobs, internships, co-op opportunities. Um, so we have a career service center on campus for all students. Then each of those 10 schools and colleges has a career service center. So you can go to the main one or you can go to the one in your school or college. So lots of resources to help you access those things. Um, yeah, like you could be a tour guide. That's a great job on campus to get paid to talk about the school. I have 10 students that work for me in the office. They give information sessions. They sit on student panels. They do a lot of helping me plan programs. If you get admitted to UMass, I plan a whole overnight. And when we were allowed for everyone to be in campus, we would let you stay in the dorm, sleep over, get a feel for what it was like before you deposited. So I had 10 students who helped me plan that so you can get paid for that. Um, the highest paid job on our campus is the PVTA bus driver. They pay you a lot and they pay for you to get your class D license or something, the license you need to drive that, you don't have to pay for it out of your own pocket, so that's another job. Each of the academic departments have like students who will help out in the offices, you can work in the, um, the dining commons, lots of students work in the dining facilities, um, you could be a tutor, you could be a peer advisor, or you could work off campus. There's a lot of things happening in the surrounding areas. Um, you could do an internship that's either paid or you're just getting credit for it. But it's not just because then you don't have to take classes, right? And that will save you money overall and time. Um, so, yeah, we also have a, 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 what is it called? It's not a website. Yeah, it's like a website called Handshake. And it's like a search tool where you can look up jobs, internships, co-ops, and things like that. Um, and then you can go to our career center and have them practice with you. So they'll help you with cover letters. They'll help you with updating your resume. They'll do mock interviews with you. So they'll pretend to interview you and you can mess up a million times with them so that by the time you go on your actual interview, you feel really confident. So there's resources, but a lot of, it's all self-advocacy. So you're not going to have teach, you know, counselors, professors following you around going, did you sign up for an internship already? It's time. You're getting ready to graduate. No one's going to say anything to you. It's your job to say, hey, I'm ready to do an internship. Can you help me find one? And they go, sure, come to my office and let's talk about it, okay? So as long as you have the desire, there's people who are going to help you get to what you want, all right? What other questions? Say it again. You want to know about them? Uh, they're very different. They all vary. There's about 30 different residence halls on campus different sections so there's a section called Southwest that has like a lot of high-rise brick buildings two of our dining commons are over there that's like our most populated area then there's our you know Orchard Hill which is a little bit off campus and it's like up on a hill and there's lots of grass around so you can go on our website and look to see like the kind of environment you want to live in and then you can rank it in order of where you want to live and they try their best to do you know your first choice um, all first years live together in first year housing after that you can mix how you want but for first years they just want to make sure everybody gets situated and they do programming and help you kind of get settled on campus before you go move anywhere else. Um, as far as picking a roommate, there's very ways, various ways to do that. You can go random, you can request, or you can meet someone on social media. After you get admitted, we invite you to like the UMass Amherst Class of 2025 or Class of 2026 page. And all the students on that page have been admitted and people start chatting and a lot of students have found their roommates that way. You can meet friends at orientation. Um, or you could just say, I have no idea pair me random 
And if you do that, they're going to give you a questionnaire and ask you like a hundred questions about yourself. Are you a morning person? Are you a night owl? Are you a messy? Are you a neat freak? If you say, I wake up at 6 in the morning and I keep my room tidy, they're not going to put you with somebody who stays up till 3 a.m. and is messy. Like, that's not going to work. So they try to pair you with someone you can live with, even if they don't end up being your best friend. I would actually highly recommend you don't live with your best friend. Okay? You want to stay best friends forever. You need a break sometimes from the people in your life, right? So you and your friend are fighting. You live in the same room. That's a disaster. Um... And I find that a lot of times students make, they can become best friends with their roommates, but sometimes, like I had some friends who they picked the same roommate all four years, but they were just kind of like, they were friends because they were roommates, but they had different groups of friends. Like they didn't actually ever hang out, but they loved living together because it worked where they could live together, right? So think about stuff like that. Um, but if you ever have an issue, you can always change and move around. They don't make you stay stuck with anybody that you don't like. Um, but everyone does get a roommate. You don't really get a single unless you're a, like an RA where your job is to be in charge of your floor or if you have like a medical or special request or something like that that they can meet it. Otherwise, you're going to have at least one person you live with. What else? Yeah? Yup. Hold on. I got some sports information here. Um, it's a club sport. Men and women volleyball. I'll put some of these sheets out. Maybe if I didn't hand them out because not everyone's interested in sports, and I don't want to assume. But if you are interested in sports, this sheet right here has all the, um, it has, these are the Division One. these are the clubs and intramurals, and then these are some of the new intramurals that we've added. So the intramurals are obviously the most fun. You don't have to have any kind of athletic skill to do it. It's just to have fun, ultimate frisbee, quidditch, those kinds of things. Um, club sports are actually pretty intense. you got to be good at the sport. It's like I almost made it D1, but I, or I don't want to get into that level of sport because I want to focus on my academics. So they play other club teams um, at other schools and then D1. So most of the D1 sports you need to be recruited. So if you want to, if any of you are playing a sport, you can fill out a contact form on our website. Um, I don't know, some of them might have walk-ons, but I don't know like off the top of my head which ones are. Maybe football? Football needs help, y'all. Anyone play football? <laughs> football? Our hockey team is the national champions, but our football team, I'm hoping they come through with UConn this weekend. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. So percentage-wise, 31% students of color, right? So that, but that includes everyone non-white. If you talk about black and brown breakdown, it's more like in the teens. So we're considered a PWI, predominantly white institution. Have you heard of that term? Yeah. Um, but I would say more and more, our, our like each year, our diversity numbers increase. More and more black and brown students or any POC student of color um, is choosing to come to Mass Amherst. Um, and a lot of times the communities that they're finding are through our clubs and organizations. Like, you know, you may, what you see right now is not going to be your experience in the classroom at UMass, right? You're currently surrounded by a diverse group of students. Where at UMass you might be one of your only POC in a class or one of a few, especially if you're in a major like engineering. You might be all alone. However, um, a lot of our students are still supported and want to come because once they leave the classroom, there's plenty of opportunities to like make family and community. Um, and even white, you know, students, you're like, what's the diversity? Because this is what I'm used to. I'm from Holyoke. What's going to happen at Amherst? So it is a different, it's literally just 30 minutes away, but it's a completely different experience. Um, but I say, like, definitely to take advantage of the resources around you in those communities because that's what's going to help you thrive through your classes and all of those things. Yeah. The bell ring is going to ring. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to come on campus right now, you see a lot of student groups kind of out. You can hear them. They might be rallying, they might be passing out flyers, they might have a protest, they might be in their clubs and organizations doing strategies, things like that. This is a large campus, and every campus is 
I would say a microcosm of the world. So it's like a small version of the of the globe. So if you're going to find hate in the world, you're going to find that on the campus. If you find racism out in the world, there's going to be racism on your campus, right? So that's just human nature. The key is, if these things happen, does the university you go to care? Do they make efforts to fix it, to hold people accountable, and those kinds of things. And so I think that's what our students are finding, that when something happens, it's not like the university just ignores it and pretends like it didn't happen. They're currently launching an investigation to find out where people are sending emails from. Um, they have a plan to punish people. I don't know what their plan is to do that, but it's not like they just let it slide. And then in the meantime, organizations are doing different things. So the other day I had a meeting with some of my students and three of them said I can't go because I have a Black Student Union meeting because we're rallying together to talk about what's happening, we're going to vet, support each other, and I need to go to that. And I'm like, absolutely, that comes first because if your mental health is not where it needs to be, you can't do your job, you can't do well in your classes, right? So I think that we have an amazing student body who are loud, who are active, who hold their university accountable, and that partnership is really what you're looking for. If you're looking for a school where nothing ever happens, I don't think that exists. So that's my short answer for that. But I could do a whole lecture on the things that we can do to improve just society in general, not just UMass Amherst. Because um, you may have heard other schools in the area that have also had incidents, right? And that comes from people who didn't get the benefit of growing up with a diverse group of students, right? All of you have been around a whole bunch of different people, so you know what it's like to be around a whole lot of different people. We have students who come from all over the world, and they might come from a rural place where they were surrounded by only other white students, and they come to UMass Amherst, and they don't, they don't have the skills, they're ignorant, and they don't know how to navigate that space. And those are the ones that we um, need to teach, not me directly, but you know them in that experience, um, and to know that the university is not going to support them. Mike. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. So um, y if you want, you can take my card, you can take some information. Um, I also work with a lot of students, so if you ever are interested in like talking to a student and not me, they can give you some real information. Um, I also do real talks with my students, so I'll, inform I'll send you guys invites to that, where it's like a Q&A, and I'm not in the room, and you just get to ask your math Amherst student. students. So, um, you could have said to that student, uh, Jasmine told me this, but what is your, ex student, your experience like as a student for real? How are you experiencing campus right now? And they're going to give you like a very candid response. And I think that might be even more beneficial than someone like me who's just a staff member. All right. Thank you. No, thank you.